what's going on for you? How could I help? So my issue is my timing. That's the worst. Timing gives me the worst anxiety. My scores are in the 145 range when I'm not doing any time tests. When I do time tests, I'm in the low 130s, sometimes even 20s because I freak out. My anxiety gets really bad. And then my most difficult part of the section is logical reasoning. I fare better on logical reasoning when I'm not being timed. So I don't know how to go about that. And it's been maybe about a year since I've really studied for the LSAT because I know you talk a lot about burnout and I did exactly what you did. I bought all of the books and I literally burned out and I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. So as of right now, I'm trying to pace myself so that I can actually get the score that I need to get to get into law school. Nice. Well, I'm glad you're changing your approach and you learned from the previous. And when are you aiming to take the LSAT right now? November Good. of this year. Nice. So you've got plenty of time. We're speaking now end of March, beginning of April. You've mm -hmm. got seven plus months to make this happen. Okay. Because someone was telling me seven months is it enough time. I need at least another few months. Maybe don't take it until the, I think, January of 2021. And I said, no, I think seven months is a good time. No, seven's plenty. I, I recommend five to six months to achieve your fullest potential. Okay. You could do it in less depending on your goals. But if you have concerns around anxiety and building the foundation, on timing and all that, I would say give yourself this time. Slow down, build the foundation first, take advantage of the quarantine, make the most of it, lay out a plan for yourself for every single day. And then before you know it, November will be here. But your mindset around this exam will have transformed and you'll, you'll truly understand how to see it from the test maker's perspective. That would be my goal. And that's what I would aim for if you have such a long time to study. So I think there's a lot you could do to make the most of this. Okay. And what do you think would be the best approach? Should I take my first test timed? Companies like to recommend that because it gives them a benchmark to claim later progress and say, before you started with us, you were here. Now you're there. But the thing is, people improve from studying no matter what they do. Okay. Building basic familiarity should lead to some improvement. Can you attribute it to the course or not? That's hard to say. But we know that no matter what, your timed diagnostic is not going to go well. It'll be discouraging. And then you'll say, oh, man, what do I do from here? And the thing is, you got to slow down regardless. The program is always the same. You work on your weak areas. You build a foundation in those. You do timed sections than full length exams, no matter, no matter where you're at. Okay, and then as far as scheduling, what do you recommend as far as time goes? How, how much time a week, especially since I have seven months, how much time should I, I dedicate? I mean, I'm quarantined, so, you know, and I'm not working or I'm working part-time from home. So what do you think is the best approach to how I should set my schedule for LSAT studies? How many hours per week are you working? Okay. From nine, to, from nine to one, so maybe about four or five hours a day. Okay, that's a, a good amount of time. That's, that's not nothing, but I would say if you're working in the morning, then use your afternoons for LSAT prep. Okay. Maybe you take a break for lunch, go for a walk if you can, and then maybe from two to five, you study for the LSAT, and that's all you need to do. Right, okay. And then how do I go about choosing one LSAT prep course or somebody to assist because there's so many out there and I've literally tried most of them already. So I think my thing is now, how do I, I find someone that's going to match my learning style because I've tried so many and it's just, I'm not having any luck. Yeah. Well, I'd say first off, most folks these days with the internet, they are putting out material for free. I've been doing this for over 15 years. I started the LSAT blog, then the YouTube channel and the podcast. And so I'd say, look at the free re resources out there and see what clicks best with you. See what you like, see what style you like. Okay. And then um, you can consume a lot of that first before making a more informed decision. Okay. So should I do flashcards? Because I even have flashcards. So do flashcards work? Should I do flashcards every now and then? Or should I just strictly look over tests figure out which questions I got wrong, or should I combine the two? Well, the LSAT's not really a test of memorization. 
So I think flashcards are of somewhat limited usefulness. They could help you if you were looking to memorize a question stem and relate it to a question type. Or maybe if there was some vocabulary related to parts of arguments that you just couldn't get, then it could be somewhat useful. But I'd say most of this exam is really testing your ability to engage in critical thinking and critical reasoning, to make deductions. It's not the sort of thing you memorize. Okay. And then as far as, you know, anxiety with tests go, how do you recommend I go about, should I ask for more time? Because my thing is, when I do get into law school, I don't want that to be an issue. Because if they look at my two lower scores, they're going to say, well, how did she get this higher score now? And I don't want it to look as if I'm a weak student or an applicant just because I had to ask for more time. Because there are certain, um, I'm just not that best of a test taker. So I don't want that to come across any type of way during my applications or in law school. I hear you. Well, a couple things. First off, the, I would try to change the, reframe the mindset around I'm not a good test taker. That's going to set a certain ceiling on how high you think you can score. So I would try to put that aside and over time, see if you can change that thought pattern around your own abilities. Because you can get better at this test. This test is learnable. A lot of it does simply come down to familiarity and pattern recognition. So I would, I would take another look at that idea. Now, secondly, with the accommodations, law schools will not know if you got accommodations for the LSAT. Okay. LSAC has been sued several times for accommodations related issues. And one of the outcomes is that your score will not have a little asterisk next to it. They will not know you had extra time. Okay. They've also become a lot more liberal in granting accommodations. So if you can go to a professional, get yourself evaluated, they recommend you get extra time. LSAC will typically give time and a half. They sometimes give double time as well. Double time is a little bit too much for some folks. So that means you're there for six, seven hours. Okay. So you may not, you may not want that much right. time, but time and a half works well for a lot of folks. And so if you think you might qualify, then I would definitely pursue that. And the good thing about you taking this exam, aiming for November, seven months away, you've got enough time to get all your paperwork together and apply in advance of deadlines, hear back from them, from them and then know how much time to give yourself on your practice tests. So rather than 35 minutes, if you get time and a half, you'd be giving yourself 53 minutes per section instead. Okay. So my next question, this is my, my last question that I have. My GPA is not bad. It's in the very high threes. I'm not in the fours, but I'd say around 3.5-ish. What type of LSAT score do you think I should aim for when trying to get into a at least top 10 or top 20. Is it doable with a 3.5? Yeah, it's doable. It's doable. I mean, you want the highest LSAT score possible regardless. That will open up the most okay. doors for you. LSAC has a GPA LSAT calculator where you, where you can actually see how you stack up against other students at that law school based on your numbers. And so that can give you a good sense of where you stand. For top 10, I think you probably want to be in the 170s. For top 20, maybe high 160s could be okay, depending on the school. But okay. with seven months, I don't see any reason not to aim for the highest score possible regardless. Right. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure you have services available. So if I need to reach out to you, you know, tutoring or for anything like that, I'm pretty sure you'll be more than happy to assist me. I certainly would be. And I've got, I've got books, guides, cheat sheets, checklists, explanations. I have full video courses for every section of the exam. Okay. I also have live online master classes and Q and A's. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. My pleasure. Have a good one, Brittany. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.